So someone once uh, recently asked me a question and I just kind of felt like it was good to make a video out of it because there's a lot of misunderstanding about um, this general topic. And so the question was based on Exodus 31, 14. Go ahead and flip with me there. You can turn to it or chew on it later, but I'm going to read it to you. It says, you shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does any work on it, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. So there's this big giant misconception of what the Sabbath is. And that's why I think in general, and I can generalize this and again, don't build um, a whole another religious system based off what I say. What I'm trying to do is trying to draw a misunderstanding. I want to draw a line on the misunderstanding of what the Sabbath is and what our picture as Christians today that really can glean from this verse here when we read this. So the person's question was, is if I don't perform the Sabbath, will I be cut off and be put to death? That's ultimately the challenge, right? If I cannot complete the Sabbath perfectly or do it um, correctly, am I going to be separated from God because of that? And that's a great question for anyone that's listening, anyone that's following along and, and, and may have that question. It's a great question. Um, for me, as a Christian, when I read these scriptures, when I, when I come to the Old Testament, I read this, I read it through the lens of understanding who Christ is and what he's completed and done for us, okay? Let me explain or elaborate a little bit on that. In Matthew 5.17, Jesus himself said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So when we read Exodus, okay, we have to understand and recognize what the Sabbath is for. And what I was trying to explain to this person is, first above all, the Sabbath, the word itself means rest. Okay, well, when was the first time we these, that we see um, rest happen? When we see someone rest. And uh, it comes down to Genesis when we see that God created the heavens and the earth and he made everything in six days. And then it says he called it very good and rested on the seventh. So my question is, did God need to rest? Well, no. God spoke everything into existence by the, the word of his power. So he didn't need to rest. So then what was really happening there? Well, the word rest there was him kind of setting back and observing and seeing everything that he made that was perfect and good. And, and it's more like taking a breath, not as in resting as in like he needed to catch his breath, but taking a breath and saying, this is good. This is perfect. But then when man sinned, uh, let me, I jumped ahead there. Sorry, I, forgive me. When, when God had a perfect union and relationship with man, when man walked with God in the garden, it says that, that, um, that there, there was no sin, right? But because sin came into the world through man's disobedience, one of the consequences of sin was um, that there would be sweat from the brow. So essentially, uh, God gave us um, the consequence of having to labor intensely. Now, man worked before the fall, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't laborious. It wasn't a burden. It wasn't, we didn't receive um, cuts and bruises and our bodies didn't ache. And it was something that was pleasing because we knew God and we had a relationship with him. But through that sin, it became turmoil. It became a heavy burden, a, 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 a disastrous task. And so through the rabbinical laws and, and through the, the structure of the temple and the sacrifice, God illustrates that we're working throughout the week because now we have to work. We didn't have hunger before. We didn't have a desire of thirst. And so now we have to work for those things because we have to find food. We have to find water and quench these desires just to live in the physical life. And so we're working throughout the week, right? And we're doing things um, that are laborious, that they hurt and and it's hard and we get calluses and we bleed and we, we now feel the effect of sin and we have to do these things, A, because it's good and we have to take care of our family and we want to work hard um, and we want to please our God. But a lot of times the religious system tells us inside of our nature, it tells us that we want to work 
to make ourselves feel better, right? And so that's the system is that we often want to work ourselves to God. Well, because we worked hard, um, we'll find our own rest. But the issue of the Sabbath was to remember that through the sacrificial institution, through the Old Testament, they only had a day of Sabbath on a specific day because they had the temple and they had to illustrate God used it to illustrate the need of atonement for our sins. So men would come um, to the priests and they would give the lamb and, and uh, the priests would um, perform the sacrifices on the Sabbath. And it wasn't the Sabbath itself was holy. It's that God is holy and it showed and revealed the need as, as the scriptures say that the law is perfect. So when we came to God, we found rest in him as he originally instituted it for, for us to have communion with him and live at peace. So the Sabbath, the design of the Sabbath in the Old Testament was for us to come to God after our, our laborious week, after us constantly bleeding and hurting and suffering and, and trying to struggle through the week. We found rest in him by that atonement through the lamb, but it wasn't, it was, it wasn't sufficient for our, our eternal souls. It was a representation and looking forward to our need in the fulfilled Christ, right? So when Christ came as Christians, now we hear that and we see, okay, well, are we supposed to um, abide by the Sabbath? Are we supposed to only go on the Sabbath, whether Saturday or some argue all these days on specific days? And the answer, the answer is, is it was never about the day. It was about the God of the day the Lord of the Sabbath that we can actually read in, in the gospels that Jesus talks about the Lord of the Sabbath, meaning that Jesus is our rest. And I know that so, so many times as Christians, we get um, kicked around saying it's so cliche. Well, we don't have to abide by the old Testament because we have Jesus. And, and a lot of atheists get upset about that because they say, Oh, well, you just get to wipe out the whole book and you don't have to follow these rules. Well, the rules were never about intending to be followed for the sake of self-preservation. Hey, they were good for us because they protected us. Because they were good for us. They set us apart from the things that could be destructive. But also it was to show our need for God and where we find actual rest. So though it sounds cliche, it's not cliche. It's just not explained good enough in today's culture. Jesus is our rest. Because he is the perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice that went and died on the cross. And when we come to him, he is holy. He is perfect. And we find rest in him from all of the work, whether physical and, and spiritual, all the things that we try and pile up and amount to show, look at what I've done. Our rest is in Christ. We give it to him. So when we now read Exodus 31, 14, um, and, and remember, Matthew 5, 17, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, but I have come, I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So Jesus says he he fulfills this verse, Exodus 31, 14, you shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does not, whoever does any work on it, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. So what I like to do, um, and I think it's biblical is to replace the word Sabbath with Jesus. Because when I read it, it says, you shall keep to Christ because he is holy for you. Everyone who profanes Christ shall be put to death. Whoever does any work added to Christ, their soul shall be cut off from among his people. So the promise is, is that if you keep Christ in your heart, like, like first Peter three fifteen says, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Always. If you sanctify Christ in your heart, you set apart Christ and recognize that the work is completed. You no longer have to wait till Sunday to perform the sacrificial duties of the lamb that Christ did that perfectly for us. He did it so perfectly that we now have access to God daily. And that's why the Bible says that we can die daily to the flesh because we can come to Christ daily. We don't have to wait till the temple or wait for the priest. Jesus is our great high priest and we can come to him and find perfect rest. 
What a promise. So we don't have to argue about what day the Sabbath is because Jesus is our Sabbath. We can truly find eternal rest through Christ, and he is our propitiation for our sins. What an amazing promise to anyone that has this burden or fear of of death because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, which means we can have hope in Jesus. I hope that that makes sense to you guys. I hope that answered any um, questions that you had, maybe thoughts about the Sabbath. And feel free to send any of your questions over. Me and Flynn and Eli are happy to jump into these. We're, we're happy to make short videos and maybe address some concerns. Go ahead and like and subscribe. And please comment on the section below if you have any additional questions. But um, just remember who Christ is and why he came. He came to die so that we would have rest in letting go of the work and coming to him. Amen. God bless you guys.